Okay, this video tutorial looks at the mathematical strand of algebra and more specifically we're going to focus our understanding on solving quadratics through interpreting graphs. So basically how do we solve quadratics through graphs? Uh, we can basically use graphs of quadratics to help us solve them by identifying the areas where the graph crosses the, y uh, the x axis or the different axes. Alright, so as you can see in our little diagram here where the graph crosses our x-axis, they're going to be the solutions, all right? And they're sometimes a one, they're sometimes uh, two, and they're sometimes you don't get a solution. And you can also see where it crosses the y-axis, all right, is going to be the constant term of our quadratic equation. Now, um, a term you may not know is parabola, all right? Basically, a parabola um, either looks like a happy face or a sad face, and that's the shape of our graphs. Um, as you can see in this example, we have a happy face. All right, um, and basically we can use this graph to to find the solutions to our equation. Okay, simply by looking at where the graph crosses the x-axis. Now we're going to go through a couple of examples um, that might give you a bit more of a clearer idea of what's going on. So we're going to talk a little bit about how you identify the number of solutions you might have based on the, the graph that you're looking at. So um, when you graph a quadratic equation, you're essentially going to have one of three different types of graphs. All right, one of them is going to have two solutions. All right, and we're going to know it's got two solutions because it crosses the x-axis at two different spots. All right. Um, so now obviously that's going to have two solutions. You can see in our middle uh, graph, it only cross, only just touches the x-axis at one spot. All right, so this means we've got one solution, all right, because it only gets close at one spot. And you're also going to have a chance where you have no solutions for the uh, quadratic equation. And then you can see that there's a specific gap or a distinct gap between the x-axis and the actual parabola of the graph. Let's have a look at a couple of example questions. Um, basically, you're just going to be asked to, f to interpret the graph to find the solutions of the quadratic equation. So we're going to look at our first one. Uh, we can see that it's got two solutions, and it looks like it crosses uh, at x equals 1. So that's one of the solutions. And it also looks like it crosses at x equals 10. And that's going to be another solution. Now, if we've got the equation y equals x squared take 11x, plus 10, and we substitute our 1 in, this becomes 1 squared, all right, take 11 plus 10, and that's going to give us an answer of 0. Okay, so we've substituted our value in to check if it's correct, which on this case it is. If we substituted our 10 in, we would end up with 10 squared, take 11 lots of 10, plus 10. We know 10 squared is 100, we take 110, we plus 10, again we get an answer of 0. So we can say yes, both of these answers are correct, they're both solutions because we've double checked by substituting our values back in. Um, if we want to look at our second example, it looks like it only touches um, at 1 potential answer and we've got x equaling 0 for that. If we want to substitute that back in, we've got negative x squared equals 0. We replace the x with a 0, so we've got negative 0 squared is the same as 0, so therefore you can't actually have a negative 0, so 0 squared is 0, yes that works. Okay, so here are some practice questions I would like you to have a go at. Um, see if you can identify the solutions to the quadratic just by identifying where they are on the graph, um, and you also might want to just double check by substituting your, your answer back in or your supposed solution back in to get an answer equal to 0. If you can do that, then it'll be correct. So have a go, feel free to pause the video, and when you think you've got it correct, continue the video. We'll see how you went. Okay, so let's have a look. It uh, looks as though the um, solutions here are, there's one at negative 2 and one at 1. So we've got x equaling negative 2 or x equaling 1. If we want to substitute those back into our equation of y equals x squared plus x, take 2. Let's say we're going to put uh, negative 2 in, first of all, we would end up with y equaling negative 2 all squared 
plus negative 2, take 2, which becomes 4, take 2, take 2, which we know is 0. Fantastic. So that solution works. If we wanted to substitute x is 1 in, I'll do this one in red, then we end up with y squared, uh, sorry, y equaling x squared plus x take 2. If I want to substitute my 1 value, I've got 1 squared plus 1 take 2, which is going to be 2 take 2, which is again 0. So we know that those solutions are correct. In our second example, we've got, uh, looks like just one solution of x equaling 2. Now, if I want to check that solution, I'm going to substitute it back in. y equals x squared take 4x plus 4. We know it's 2, so 2 squared take 4 lots of 2 plus 4 is 4. Take 8 plus 4. We know that's going to equal 0 as well. Therefore, yes, that solution works as well.